Hello and welcome to I Am with Eric Faria. I am your host and today it is my pleasure to introduce you all to Russ Terry who is a life coach, an author, and a keynote speaker. So thank you for being here Russ. <laughs> thank you for having me Eric. It's so <laughs> great to be here. Likewise, likewise. So let's talk about how did these two books come ah, to fruition? I love the books. It's yeah. so awesome seeing them here. So I read a book late in 2012 called The Fearless Factor by Jacqueline Wales. And in it, she talks about uh, gratitude. Mm -hmm. So as I was reading the book, prepping to have her on my show, uh, she said, you should keep a gratitude journal. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep a gratitude journal. Hmm. So I just started on a random day, December 10th, 2012. And... Uh, I've been expressing a different uh, piece of gratitude every single day since then. So it's soon going to be five years without wow. repeating anything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, 1,700. Uninterrupted. Not even missing uninterrupted, a single day. Not even missing a single day. Yeah. So I can't wait for my five-year anniversary. And <laughs> yeah, coming up in December. It really is an amazing process. I always say to people, uh, when you train the brain to be grateful, mm. the expressions of gratitude keep flowing like a bountiful river. Wow. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, that is Thank so beautiful. You. Thank, Thank you. you. So you first wrote this one, correct? My That's Gratitude right. Journal. My Gratitude Journal. Thank you for arranging them so nicely yeah. so everybody can see them. <laughs> So can you talk a little bit about the gratitude journal? Yeah, so basically it's uh, a different expression of gratitude every day for one year. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, it literally is my gratitude journal, but then in it I also have lessons that I learned in the process of keeping a gratitude journal. I give space for the reader to write what they may have learned mm. uh, by reading a week's worth of gratitude entries for me. So there are 52 different spaces to write for all 52 weeks. And it was a really cool process. So I started December 10th, 2012, and it ends December 9th, 2013. And you get to see all my gratitude entries for all 365 days, all different entries. Again, uh -huh. I don't repeat myself, which yeah. I think is key. You know, you hear those things, oh, I'm grateful for family, I'm grateful for health. And those things are all both excellent things to be grateful for. But I think when you train the brain to expand your search and to mention specific people or specific mm -hmm. life experiences, then it really opens up how much we can be grateful for and how it can have an amazing positive impact on our life. That's awesome. Thank you. So for people who are listening to us, who are seeing us, because it's going to be both a podcast and on YouTube Love as it. well as on LMC TV. So what would you say would be the first step for gratitude? Because sometimes, just before you answer, I feel like I, in my personal life, think it has to be something so huge for me to be grateful for. Right? No, it, so. it can be simple stuff, like even uh, uh, us recording this episode today. Uh, I was running late and got here late. The episode before us was going over and took extra time. Yeah. So I'm grateful <laughs> that it all worked out perfect and neither of us was waiting long for the other. So it can be super simple stuff like cheese curls. I'm super grateful for cheese curls. They're delicious. Who doesn't love <laughs> cheese curls, you know? Uh, it can be getting a parking spot right. or... Uh, obviously something that someone does for us or even a simple thing like water. Yeah, you know, right. so many people Having in so many countries drinkable water. don't have water. Yeah, yeah so, so true. I'm grateful for water. Oh, so that's, yeah, so it can start really small. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that's so important. So if somebody wants to start a journal like you did in your book, what's the first step? I think just doing it and figuring out, okay, how long do I want to keep a gratitude mm -hmm. journal for? Is it a week? Is it a month? What's a reasonable goal for me that I can meet? And doing it however they want to do it, whether it's writing in an actual journal that you get at the store, mm -hmm. um, doing it in an app, uh, doing it, typing it on their computer, whatever works for people, um, and just starting. And you'd be surprised how your life starts to change when you start that process. Yeah, so that was my next question, actually. What has changed in your life since you began this process almost five years ago? So I think I was always a super positive person, and this has taken my positivity to an infinitely higher level. Uh, you can't both be angry and grateful at the same time. So <laughs> it's, it psychologically yeah. and physiologically, it helps us 
live a better life, live a happier life, number one. Mm. Number two, I've had so many amazing things happen since I've been on this path of being grateful and I'm a firm believer mm. that all these great things that have been happening are because I am grateful for the good things that happen and it's like it creates even more abundance in my life. That's so amazing. Thank you. And inspirational. Thank you. So, That's yeah. my goal. I want to <laughs> inspire people to keep a gratitude journal because when you do it, great things are going to happen. And also, if you're in a difficult situation mm. and you can be grateful, it can help make the difficult times better. I thoroughly believe it. So that's amazing. And then let's go to the second book, Our Gratitude Mission. So 15 people, 365 days, infinite transformations. Yes. So, How did that come about? Okay, so as I was finishing the first book, my friend and mentor, uh, Jen Festa Giordano, she said, you know, I think it's so cool what you're doing, Russ. Uh, what if you were to take what you're doing and encourage other people to do it and then make another book with all of them having mm. a part of it. So the second book, Our Gratitude Mission, is 15 people from around the U.S. and other parts of the world who did what I did, different expression of gratitude every day for one full year, and then each of them writes a chapter in the book talking about how that year of gratitude had an amazing positive impact on their life. Wow, and how was the experience for you, like working with you know, 14 other people. Yeah, it was really awesome. Um, you know, it's such a diverse mix of people. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, one of the individuals is Brazilian. So oh, uh, we nice. do have that demographic represented. <laughs> um, and I'm really proud of it. You know, they had, uh, I would say, uh, not only are they, do they look diverse, but they had a diversity of experiences in that year. Some had a great year, some had a challenging year. So I was just talking to somebody about the book today and she said what she likes is it's all different stories in the book. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously in my book, there were amazing things happening, so mm -hmm. it was very easy to be grateful. Sure. For some of them, loss of a job, loss of a loved one, loss of an animal, you know, things like that. Right. So I think more, even more people will be able to relate to the second book than just my book, but maybe I'm biased, I think both books are excellent. <laughs> I would agree, actually. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah. These are your books, so you Yeah, have they are. Them. Yeah. <laughs> you signed them to me, so yes. no taking them back. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think you, you know, um, are able to see in the books or have been able to see in the books the cool stuff in the books, mm -hmm. um, what's inspiring in them, etc. For sure, for sure, definitely. And where do you see your gratitude mission uh, moving forward? So there are so many more gratitude books coming. Are okay. you ready to hear? Yeah, go okay. ahead. <laughs> so our gratitude mission too is a follow-up to this. So it's mm. um, more people who did a year of gratitude. So uh, I think we have eight or nine of us in it. So that mm. might be out later this year, uh, if not early 2018 at the latest. Mm -hmm. Then uh, my next book is uh, after that is Grateful Kids. So it's kids who are keeping a gratitude wow. journal. So we have about 14 kids from around the country and uh, we have like a family of four boys from Minnesota uh -huh. and a family of three girls from Colorado. Um, so I'm very excited about all the kids in that because I think, you know, sometimes kids can be a little bit ungrateful. You know, mommy, I want this, daddy, I want that. You know, where are my toys? And sure. I feel like the gratitude process for kids um, is gonna be really amazing because it's gonna get them young. We gotta get them young, you know, and <laughs> yeah. make sure they know all about gratitude at that early age. So that's Grateful Kids and then Grateful Schools. I'm collaborating with Peter Franklin, who is one of the authors in our gratitude mission. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, is this amazing English teacher in Massachusetts and he teaches gratitude in his classroom. He teaches mindfulness, he does yoga. So uh, he and I are co-authoring this next project, Grateful Schools, helping to embed gratitude into the curriculum at schools. So that'll come out in the next couple years. And then last but not least after that is grateful grandparents. So a lot of times when people are older, life can be more challenging. You know, they have health issues, they may have a friend or significant other or relative pass away. So by having gratitude at that late challenging mm -hmm. part of life, I feel like it can make their golden years more golden. That's fantastic. Thank you, it's a lot of work, so bear with me if it takes me a while to get all these books out, but I'm really excited. You know, my goal is to make the world a better place through gratitude, and I'm trying to do that. That's fantastic. We will be right back. I have so much more to talk to you, and stick with us. We will be right back after this.
And we are back. This is I Am with Eric Faria. And today I have Ross Terry, who is here to talk about gratitude and other topics. So <laughs> as we were talking before the break, Russ, we were talking about the books. And I just wanted to ask you, you said that you were a very positive person from the get-go, right? So if you can take us back to your upbringing, how was that like, your early years, your earliest memories? Yeah, I think so. My mom instilled that in me. She and I actually used to play tennis together a lot. I love uh, tennis. Oh, we'll have to play sometime. Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> Something sure. else to be grateful for, <laughs> tennis with Eric. Yeah. Um, and on the court, she would say, with conviction, PMA, positive mental attitude. And that stuck with me to this day. Mm. So. I was trained by her to be positive and grateful. And I think I have always been this way. And now that I am writing books on gratitude, et cetera, I think I've taken it to a higher level. But it's definitely something that I think people that have known me for a while um, probably aren't super surprised um, that because they hopefully have seen me in this light that I'm a very positive, happy person. Mm. That's so interesting. So from a very early age, as far as you can remember, your mother was always pushing you to be a positive person. Yes, yes. Because, you know, when we're playing tennis together, mm -hmm. if you think bad things, then bad things are likely to happen. But sure. if you have a positive mental attitude, then you can shake off the bad points and uh, focus on the next point, that current point, um, which is, of course, very important. So, you know, happy ending. We, uh, I know there's one tournament in particular we won, um, which was really, really awesome to be the champions. Uh-huh. So cool. So going back to gratitude for a moment, what is the one thing that you want people to get about gratitude? It's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I'll give you many things, but I'll give them to you quickly. <laughs> it's easy to do. It's free. It will make your life better, mm. and there's no reason not to do it. Mm. And for somebody who might be skeptical, right? We are living in current times where everything's so like, uh, yeah, it's so challenging sometimes to even open up, you know, Facebook or the uh, news or whatever. And you're so challenged, and there's so much negativity going on in the world. I feel like there's always been, but lately it's been more in our faces. Um, so. How do we counter that? How do we go in the opposite direction? So it's obviously not easy, but I think a few little things, like if there's a tragedy, and unfortunately these days there have been more tragedies, right. which is horrible. Okay. I'm not denying that. But we can say, you know what? I'm grateful it didn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm grateful my loved ones are safe. I still have uh, sympathy for the people who are experiencing that tragedy, immense sympathy for them. But I'm grateful I'm safe. I'm grateful my loved ones are safe. Um, even the political stuff, you know, we won't get into that, mm -hmm, but... Mm -hmm. um, no, but it's important. It's important. Just to know how to deal with it. Right, people are upset by it. Yes. So I'm grateful that, you know, we do have some great politicians, or I'm grateful that hopefully, you know, things will improve at some point, mm -hmm. or I'm grateful for the good parts that we have, or I'm grateful that uh, Obamacare didn't get repealed, or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. Sure. So even though there are bad things happening, we can still find positives in a bad situation. And when we can find positives in a bad situation, that is the best kind of gratitude at all, because it can help to improve our mood. That's, that's very good. How do you personally deal with negative people in your life? Uh, I try to remove them from my life, to be honest. Really? Yeah, we don't have to keep negative people in our life. Uh, mm. We can choose to step away from that relationship or at the very least um, reduce the amount of time that we spend with them. But uh, Oprah had a great video that we are responsible for who's in our circle. And if we let negative or toxic people into our circle, mm -hmm then of course we're gonna be negatively affected by them. So I think we need to step away from those relationships, whether they're friends, family, coworkers, whatever, mm -hmm. and um, take responsibility for only having positive people in our life. That's, that might be easier said than done. It is, but, and it's hard stepping away from those situations. Mm -hmm. I won't deny that. Yes. But in those situations that I've stepped away from, uh, it may not have been 100% easy to step away, but mm -hmm. I'm 100% easy that it was the right decision to step away. Oh, okay, got it. Because I was thinking about in terms of family members, for example, you don't get to really choose your family members, right? right? You're born into the family you're born right. into. 
So what if it's like uh, a loved one, uh, you know, an uncle, a cousin, or even a mother or a father, right? How do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, we don't have to spend as much time with them as we are currently. Mm -hmm. We can step away and say, you know what, this isn't serving me well right now, the way this relationship's working. So I'm going to take a step back. And if and when you're ready to be more positive, mm -hmm. then uh, we can resume um, seeing each other often. Yeah, that's very important. I feel like more than ever, it's better for me on a personal level to actually engage with people that I normally wouldn't engage with, especially after the last election. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have been actually allowing myself to be in conversations and to practice empathy. And from what you're saying, gratitude sounds a lot like empathy a lot of the times, right? I often say gratitude is synonymous with kindness. And I think we all can use a lot more kindness Definitely. these days. Yeah, for sure. So what is your daily routine in terms of gratitude or, or kindness? What does it look like? So uh, by the end of the day, I always post on my gratitude Facebook page uh, what I'm grateful for that day. So it might be one thing. It might be a number of things. Last night I had a bullet, bullet point list because I had a lot of stuff to be grateful for. And as I said before, I never repeat myself. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that it's something new that I haven't expressed gratitude before. Um, today, maybe it'll be my appearance on your TV show and meeting you in person and uh, us getting to talk about gratitude. How cool is that? Indeed. I think it's so cool. And if you were to do that, I would be very grateful. Um, See? That, that spreads gratitude. Right. I, I didn't even notice that. See? I just said I would be very grateful. Yeah. And I did it. Right. So then you're grateful. And now if you're grateful and feeling better and even more positive than you usually do, yeah. then you're likely to spread that to somebody else. Wow. That is... I, I felt like it was a magic trick or something uh -huh. <laughs> that you tricked me. <laughs> it's not a trick, though. No, it's it's not, real. Though, yeah. It's awesome. It is. Yeah. So um, in terms of like friendships and uh, the close people that you have in your life, what is the importance, since we were talking about that, what is the importance of cultivating positive people in your inner circle? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, um, I always talk to any of my clients or potential clients about the figurative energy of the people around us. It's very important to have mm. people who make us happier, um, uplift us, support us, help us learn and grow. And the more people that we have like that around us, the better our life is going to be. So decrease the negative or toxic people or our interaction with them mm -hmm. and increase the positive people who enhance the quality of our life. Mm -hmm. That's very good. And last but not least for this segment, um, if I would want to, for example, attract somebody into my life, a positive person, what is one thing or a few things that I could do to make that happen? That's an excellent question. I love that. So I think number one, to put it out there into the universe, I want more positivity in my life. And like uh, The Alchemist by Apollo Coelho. I love that book, uh, yes. Somehow I knew you would. My life coach intuition told me yes. that. When we put it out there into the universe, all the universe conspires to make it happen. So number one, just by saying it, I want more positive people mm -hmm. in my life. And then uh, by being more positive, by being more kind, by being more grateful, I would bet money that more positive people would come into your life or someone else's life. All right, so making what seems like it's out of the realm of possibility a reality. Yes. In other words, right? Exactly, and that's, that's exactly how this works, making yeah. it a reality. We can all make our life an amazing, positive, grateful reality. That's so good. So I'm going to stop here for this segment, but we will be right back. So thank you for watching. Stick with us for the last segment. Hello again, this is Eric Faria, and I'm here today with Russ Terry, life coach, author, keynote speaker, and I want to talk to him a little bit about coaching. Ah, woohoo. <laughs> yes. I'm grateful to you for that too. Yeah, I know, right? So how did you get into coaching? So believe it or not, uh, two different friends of mine who didn't know each other both said to me within two or three weeks of each other, 
have you ever thought about becoming a life coach? I think you'd be really great at it. And I hadn't, but uh, at that point I was like, okay, let me look into this. And I did look into it. I liked what I heard. I spoke to people who were coaches or in the process of becoming coaches. And I was at a crossroads in my corporate career. That job was ending. Mm -hmm. So it was the perfect time to go for it. So I did. I left my corporate job March 15th, 2012 started a life coach training program the next morning, March 16th. And by lunchtime, I was like, oh my God, this is what I was born to do. That's like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I, at the end of that first three-day weekend, I said to the trainer, I was like, I think I'm ready to start having paying clients. <laughs> and she was like, I think you are too, Russ. Go for it. So I did. And within a few weeks, I had my first paying client. Within a month and a half, I had eight clients. And my business has just continued to grow since then. Amazing. So how have you been able to maintain that level of just, you know, enthusiasm for coaching? So my style is to be politely assertive. I love coaching. I think it benefits so many people. I so do too. As I meet people, uh, I'm not afraid to say, well, if you ever want to have a free session, I'd be happy to have a free session with you. Or if you ever want to brainstorm on that, I'd be happy to have a free session with you. Um, so number one, I'm politely assertive. Number two, uh, I had a long corporate career, 12 and a half years at PwC, one of the big four public accounting consulting firms, and I've gotten a lot of clients from there. So because I've had momentum in my business, um, that has helped me maintain the enthusiasm about my business. You know, being an entrepreneur is hard. It's not for everyone, mm -hmm. but when you can be successful in it, it's amazing. I love sleeping in every day. I love wearing whatever I want, doing whatever I want, whenever I want. So all of that stuff's really cool. And I'm lucky that my business has continued to grow over these last five and a half years. Fantastic. And what do you think is the number one thing, the key ingredient that makes you a great life coach? Oh my gosh, I have to pick just one. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, the gratitude, obviously. Right? I think without sounding cocky or arrogant, hopefully it doesn't come across that way, I feel like I do have an it factor where I'm approachable, uh, I'm knowledgeable, I'm an excellent coach, I ask really great questions that help people figure things out on their own. And not only they figure it out, but then we come up with a tactical game plan of how they can go out and make it happen. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the importance of having a life coach? I think it's excellent. I mean, uh, like the former Google CEO says, everybody should have a coach. And I myself have hired a coach mm -hmm. and uh, invested in it. It's an important investment in ourselves. We don't invest in ourselves often enough. And when we have a coach, we have carved out time with someone to talk about our own life, um, what we wanna do, how we're gonna go about making it happen, what kind of blocks maybe have been getting in our way, um, things that we didn't realize about ourselves that somebody else, because we're talking to them about it, can have a different perspective on. Um, whereas therapy may happen if something bad was in our life. You know, we're depressed, suffering mm -hmm. from anxiety, sad, um, angry. Coaching takes us from good to great or great to excellent. I could not agree more as a coach myself. And I usually tell people that coaching is like having transformative conversations. Oh, that's so good. Can I use that? Of course. Oh my God, that's <laughs> awesome. I love it. But yeah, isn't it though? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And I get chills when I have an awesome coaching session with somebody, It's yeah. as you probably do also. It's so yeah. cool. And I feel like people don't get heard, seen, and valued often enough. Yes. And that's what is actually missing when they have somebody that they can actually talk to that not only has their best interest at heart, but who will be there every step of the way, you know, to cross that finish line with them. It's just so amazing. I saw a great quote today. Often in life, people are listening to respond and a coach listens to hear. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Very accurate. Oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> yeah. So from that, from the coaching, how did you move into keynote speaking? Because I know you do that too. So. Yeah. So the very first keynote speaking gig I got was a fraternity. Shout out to all my Alpha Kappa Psi brothers. I wasn't in the fraternity, but they've welcomed me in. And I was early on in my coaching career. First year, I said to my BFF, Anika, I was like, you know what? I'd love to speak to organizations. And she was like, oh, why don't I have you speak to my fraternity? 
So she put me in touch with um, the Northeast Regional Director of her fraternity, Nahim. He was like, you know, okay, that sounds good. Have you come speak at one of our meetings? I spoke at their meeting in Philly. That led to a keynote speak, uh, speech in Boston for the fraternity, um, speaking at their national conference in New Orleans. So then once you do it once, then you have the topics down. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm super excited that now, um, you know, I've spoken at L'Oreal earlier this year. Wow. Um, I've been at United Airlines twice already this month, which has been so freaking cool. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's like you do it once and you figure out what you want to say, and then you reach out to people in a politely assertive way to say, hey, I can speak at your company. And not everybody says yes, but a lot of them do. Mm. And what have you been talking about lately? So believe it or not, uh, at United is communicating in a concise way. So uh, communication is key, and it's not, uh, the coaching aspect of it isn't 100% of what I talk about. Luckily, I feel like I've had a lot of different careers and can talk about a multitude of things. So uh, at United, it's about communicating uh, concisely. Uh, at L'Oreal, it was about failing forward. So how failure isn't a bad thing. It's actually an opportunity for us to learn and do things differently. Um, That's the way I feel about that as well, yes. Thank you. Uh, there's also a, uh, an organization in Philly that I spoke at about gratitude, and uh, the CEO was in the room, mm. and uh, he said that he wanted to buy copies of my book for everyone. So uh, fast forward to today, I was back at that company in Philly, and I signed uh, 45 books. He gave one to everybody, which I thought was super cool. So cool. I right know, on, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So... We're coming to the end of the show, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know. So since the name of the show is I Am, I always ask my guests this question. If you had to define yourself, and I know it's hard sometimes, who is Russ Terry? Well, I am grateful. Uh, number one, I'm positive. I try to be a ray of light. Uh, some of my Life Coach Radio Network's colleagues have called me a force of nature. Um, I like to have an idea for something and then go out and make it happen. I think that can be very inspiring. And I live my best life. Uh, I love my life and mm -hmm. I try to inspire others to do the same in their life. Amazing. Thank you. That's so good. That's Thank so you. good. So for everybody who's watching us, is there any final th thought that you would like to leave them with? Uh, a quote, something that you like, you enjoy, that you want to share with the world? Yeah, I think, you know, my quote earlier, which you seem to love, uh, but I always say it, when you train the brain to be grateful, um, the expressions of gratitude keep flowing like a bountiful river. That's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you once again, Russ, You're welcome, for being Eric. here with me. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, everybody, please go get his books. So my gratitude journal and our gratitude mission, where can they find the books? Uh, they can find them on Amazon, um, or if they want a signed copy, uh, they can go to my website, rustterrylifecoach.com, uh, and uh, there's a link on there, buy my books. Okay, good. That is amazing. Thank you once again for being here today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. This is what I'll be grateful for today. <laughs> my pleasure. And for everybody watching, thank you once again. And I hope you will tune in next week for the new episode. Thank you.